Welcome to The Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Su, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about a pars fracture, which is spondylolysis that can lead to an ismic spondylolisthesis. That just sounded like a crazy encyclopedia of words, but I promise you at the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what those words stand for. You can understand what the imaging studies look like, the x-ray, the CT, the MRI, as well as some of the symptoms that are associated with it. I'll be posting new videos weekly, so hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. Just to review the anatomy of the lumbar spine, you can certainly watch the lumbar anatomy episode, but as a very brief review, this is the side view of the low back. There's your back, your buttock, your belly. You're facing this way. This big bone on the bottom is called the sacrum. The next bone is called L5. The next bone is called L4. The vertebral body extends through and through. That's the front of the vertebral body, and that's the back of the vertebral body. The first thing to understand is what the pars actually is. The pars is an anatomical area of the lumbar spine. So if this is a model of lumbar spine, this is the front of the spine, this is the back of the spine, there's the L5 bone, there's the L4 bone. The L5 pars is the most commonly injured, and that's what I've drawn over here. So you'll see that the pars is this area where I've drawn over in black on both sides, so it's bilateral, meaning one on each side. And the pars is a very thin area of bone that is susceptible to injury. The pars can fracture, and when it fractures, it breaks, and that's what's called a spondylolysis. Spondylolysis implies a fracture or a break of the pars. So an L5 spondylolysis is a fracture of the L5 pars. So here I have a saw bones model that I've cut apart a little bit. So here's the model there. You'll see in the back of that model that I've cut the L5 pars, so now the back of the spine is separate. So the word spondylolisthesis is just a term that means slippage of one bone in front of another. Spondylolisthesis can happen in many different ways. In fact, the majority of spondylolisthesis or slippage of one bone in front of another is degenerative in nature, meaning it happens over time. It is not because of a pars fracture. Today, we're specifically talking about a spondylolisthesis as a result of a pars fracture. So from a scientific standpoint, the word Ismic spondylolisthesis means a spondylolisthesis as a result of a pars fracture. The only thing the word ismic means is it's because of a pars fracture. So let me show you once again this model. So this is the L5S1 bone and I've drawn a fracture there and to simulate the fracture I've cut across it. As a result of the fracture, what can happen is one bone can start sliding on top of the other bone. As that bone slides, it can obviously be painful because that fracture site is painful, and as it slides, it can pinch a nerve. So that's what ismic spondylolisthesis means. It means slippage of the bone from a fracture of the pars. Pars fractures are very common. In fact, 25% of the population has a pars fracture. I have a pars fracture. I developed it when I was much younger, playing volleyball in high school. When a pars fracture is unilateral, meaning it's on one side, it can cause on again and off again pain, but it usually doesn't cause stability issues or spondylolisthesis because one side is still intact. But you can imagine that if there's a fracture on both sides, like so, and there's a slippage of one bone in front of another, that can obviously cause pain. Not everybody with a pars fracture and not everybody with a spondylolisthesis develops pain, but it is definitely one of the most common things I see in the clinic and can be a cause of low back pain as well as buttock and leg pain. It might be a little bit easier to understand what this looks like by looking at some x-rays. And so let me show you what an x-ray looks like of somebody that has a pars fracture and an ismic spondylolisthesis. I should also mention that if you remember this is the low back. That's the L5 bone, that's the S1 bone. There's a nerve that comes out between L5 and S1, and that nerve is called the L5 nerve. The reason I'm bringing that up is when the bone fractures and it slips, that slippage of the vertebra can start pinching the L5 nerve because that fracture or break pinches the L5 nerve. One of the first things we do when people come to the clinic is we get an x-ray, and the x-ray is really the first place we'd see a pars fracture as well as a spondylolisthesis or slippage. 
a couple of things I'm going to show you is where the fracture is seen on the x-ray and I'm also going to show you that as the spine slips and becomes unstable, the disc in between the two bones rub. As the discs rub, the disc can rub out and then you get what's called degenerative disc disease. So first I'm going to remind you what a normal x-ray looks like. So this is the lumbar spine or low back. There's the back, there's the buttock, there's the belly. There's the L5 bone, that's the sacrum, there's the L4 bone. So you're looking from the side here. And the pars, which is this area here, you can see extending down. So this is actually the pars of L4, there's the pars of L5, and that's the sacrum. The sacrum is the big bone on the bottom. This is a normal x-ray, there's no obvious pars fracture here. But I, I just want to show this to you relative to somebody who does have a pars fracture. So here's L4, here's L5, here's S1. This is one of the most severe forms of a pars fracture and instability or ismic spondylolisthesis. I'm showing this to you so you can see obviously what happens. So this is the L5 bone, there's the S1 bone, and this is the L4 pars. And here, if you follow my pointer, you'll see that the five pars comes here and all of a sudden there's a defect here and a defect on x-ray shows up as gray whereas bone shows up on white and that is the l5 pars fracture the rest of the l5 bone is back here so this entire thing is defect so if this is l5 and this is s1 like so what's happened is because of the break you now have a separation and slippage so that separation you're seeing where that darkness is is right here the way we measure the amount of instability or sliding is by looking at the back of each bone. So here's the back of the L5 bone, there's the back of the sacrum, and this red dotted line indicates how much slippage there is. The other thing you'll notice is the disc, so the cushion between the bones, there's the L4-5 disc, which is the disc between the L4 and L5 bone. This is the L5-S1 disc here. It's been rubbed out and degenerated almost to a little sliver here because of the instability. You can imagine because of the altered biomechanics, as L5 moves on top of S1, because of the fracture, this gets rubbed out. Something else we might get is a CT scan. A CT scan is kind of a hybrid between an X-ray and an MRI. You still go in a tube to obtain a CT scan, but the CT scan shows bony detail, and it shows it in very a thin slice format like an MRI. So this is a straight side view of somebody that has an ismic spondylolisthesis. This happens to be the CT of the patient's uh, x-ray that I just showed you. So on this CT, which is the side view, you'll see that because of that slippage and rubbing out of L5 on S1, one on top of another, the L5 S1 disc, again, is very degenerative. And so here's a normal looking disc. That's the space between the L4 and L5 bone. And at L5 S1, you'll see that's been uh, rubbed out and degenerated to a thin ribbon. Here you'll see the amount of instability um, that's measured, which is the displacement of the rest of the spine forward relative to the S1 bone. Here's a CT scan looking directly from the side. And this is what we call the foramen, which is looking exactly here where the nerve is trying to come out. And I've drawn in yellow where the nerves are coming out. So there's the L4 bone, L5 bone, that's the sacrum. Here's a great picture of the pars. So again, the pars is an anatomical area. So this is the L4 pars right here, and that's equivalent to this. This is the L5 pars here, and I've drawn in black where the fracture is or where the break is. And if you trace the L5 pars here, you'll see that there's a defect. And on CT, defect also shows up as gray. The rest of the L5 bone is back here when it's supposed to be entirely con continuous like the L4 level. So this fracture here is an equivalent view of this dark line here. Now, I said before that there's a nerve that comes out between L5 and S1, and I've drawn the nerve in yellow. So L4-5, the nerve is nice, large, expanded. That's a normal look at the nerve, which is right here. At L5-S1, I've drawn the nerve as kind of squashed because what's happened is, as the spine slips forward, the fracture drives and compresses the nerve. In addition to the fracture compressing the nerve, what can happen is because a disc is degenerated, you have what's called up-down compression of the nerve because the nerve is getting pushed from the top and from the bottom 
as a result of the disc wearing out. Here you'll see the disc is nice and tall, so this is the foramen where the nerve lives, and there's lots of room for the nerve, whereas here the nerve's getting squashed because that foramen's getting compressed up down. And lastly, here we have the MRI. The MRI shows uh, soft tissue detail. So let me orient you once again. Here's a side view of a normal MRI. So this is the L4 bone, L5 bone, that's the sacrum, L4, 5 disc, L5, S1 disc, and nice high maintained disc. This is a normal looking spine. So this is the MRI of the patient that I showed you the, the x-ray and the CT of, and you'll see here that when we look across the spine, L4-5 looks totally fine, and L5-S1, that disc, is completely collapsed down because of the instability, and here you can actually see that there's a shifting of one on top of another. So again, this view here is showing this, one sliding on top of another. This is the foramenal view, very similar to the CT view I just showed you, but here we can actually see the nerve getting squashed. Again, this is one of my patients who had a very severe form of is an expondylolisthesis and lots of uh, nerve pain because of nerve compression. So again, there's the L4 bone, there's the L4 por pars coming down. Here's the L5 bone. And you can see that the pars are supposed to come down just like this, except it stops here and there's this dark defect. Now on uh, MRI, the defect shows up as dark, the fracture shows up as dark. So the L5 pars fracture is here. And I've uh, put in yellow the nerve. So here you can see there's a, there's a nerve there. And then that's an L4, L5. And an L5, S1, the nerve is there. So there's the S1 bone, there's the L5 bone. That nerve is just getting completely squashed where it's supposed to have the same amount of spaces here. And you can see it's because the fracture has driven into the nerve. So I'll reiterate once again, as you can see from this model, what can happen is that that nerve right there is getting compressed both up down as well as front back from the instability. So again, 20 to 25% of the population has a pars fracture. In fact, most people who have pars fractures don't even know it because either the pars fracture is on one side, meaning it's unilateral, and it's causing on and off again symptoms, which would just be low back pain because the fracture can cause low back pain, or it's bilateral, and it just happens to not be symptomatic. People who have a pars fracture and an ismic spondylal thesis tend to present with back pain because of the fracture itself. And the back pain can be insidious and in onset, meaning it's usually gradual or it's episodic. Patients will have pain for a few weeks at a time and then it'll get better and then worse, then better, etc. The symptom that can present in addition to back pain, which is what most patients end up seeing me for, is actually leg pain. So sciatica, which is essentially pinching of one of the branches of the sciatic nerve is very common in an ismic spondylolisthesis. And the reason being, I just showed you that that nerve, which is the L5 nerve, can often get pinched as a result of the pars fracture L5. And pinching the L5 nerve causes buttock and leg pain. Most commonly, a pars fracture happens at L5. Occasionally, they happen at L4, but mostly they're at L5. And the L5 nerve is the one that's most commonly involved. Here you'll see that the L5 nerve goes around the outside leg to the big toe. Many patients with an ismic spondylolisthesis present with an L5 radiculopathy, which just means symptoms in the L5 nerve distribution. As part of the imaging study, when patients come to me, we typically do a strength study as well, and that is because strength is a good indicator of how healthy the nerve is. So for an L5 spondylolisthesis, again, it's the L5 nerve, and the L5 nerve is the nerve that goes to the big toe extensor. Several different ways to test the L4, L5, and the S1 nerve, but typically I'll have the patient seated, and I'll have them extend their legs slightly with their heel on the floor and say, big toe up as strong as possible and push down on the entire forefoot. I should be able to lean on the entire forefoot and have no ability to push down. Full strength is essentially five out of five strength is full resistance where I can't push down. And she has five out of five strength. That's to test the L4 nerve. The L5 nerve can be tested by just the big toe. Interestingly, the L5 nerve sends supply to the muscle that controls extension to the big toe. So I ask patients to bring their big toe up towards the nose, push down. And if there's good resistance, it means the L5 nerve is strong. So as part of the initial exam, 
We would do x-rays, we do MRI, I talk to patients about their symptoms. And again, the classic symptoms of somebody with an L5-S1 ismic spondylolisthesis is back pain because of the fracture, buttock and leg pain because of the up-down compression and instability L5-S1, which pinches on the L5 nerve. L5 nerve base pain, which is buttock down the back of the leg to the top of the foot, and sometimes a little bit of weakness in the big toe extensor. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the pathology, the imaging studies, the symptoms of an ismic spondylolisthesis, which now you know means instability from a pars fracture. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below, and feel free to let me know what videos you would like to see in the future. Our next video will be focused on the non-operative treatments of an ismic spondylolisthesis.